Hi. Today arrived at my house these, which are rotifer cysts. You can see them in that little capsule there. Uh, these are to bolster my ecosystem, give it a greater uh, diversity. I had been looking at this for the last two weeks. This is a very new tank. Uh, in here we have some mini hairy grass, which I bought the seeds off of eBay. It's actually growing quite well. Also have some ceratophyllum and two different types of elodia, which have come from my pond. I've recently purchased two Marimo balls, which the Acellus really enjoy. And there's a little bit of Java moss in there as well, also which I bought from eBay. And up in the corner here, we have this cluster of HC, popularly, popularly known as HC. Um, I don't can't remember the Latin name right now. Um, that was, it's growing quite well. I did have it down here. And some of it was jutting into the shaded area at the back and it just mushed like uh, its light requirement is quite obvious. Uh, for lighting, I have the three eBay lights, which are the cheapest available. Um, the one at the back is really, really sweet. It is touch sensitive. Uh, this bit here is sort of cardboard, though, paper. So I think it's directly onto the yeah, it's directly onto the uh, plastic. So it's not too bad. But I wondered whether that could have been, like, laminated for safety. Uh, it's a USB, uh, like the Android USB connector, the new one, not the old one. Uh, it's quite good. Uh, this one here is a switch. It has both blue and blue and white at the same time. I'm currently using the blue just to illuminate this a little bit which is food for mammoth winter fairy shrimp. Um, I still have eggs remaining that I've not used. It's sort of, I think it's got cat poo in it, to be honest. I think it's cat poo, sand, and something else. It sort of smells a little bit cat pooey. That's why. It's like he's taken a little scoop out of his cat poo tray. <clears throat> Anyhow, and then we have this one, which is... Uh, red, white, green, and blue. They say the red and the blue is for the algae, the green is for the colour, and the white is for the general illumination. Growth rates in the tank have been quite good, to be honest. I've already had to clip stuff back. I'm going to have to clip stuff back again today, um, just to keep this channel open in the middle here, which is our viewing area. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, yeah, so at the back we have log. Uh, when I want more sort of yeast and stuff in the pond, I raise the water level. Log feeds the pond, and then you just let the water evaporate down again. The cloudiness in here I had thought was yeast. Uh, some of it may even be, but I actually think having held the camera up to it and also having seen um, different sort of rotifers and infusoria on YouTube videos, I actually think it's quite a lot of infusoria anyway, and things like rotifers, um, and not yeast. So it's tough at the moment because I don't know whether to add some yeast as feed or not. So I don't know, but it seems to have been sustaining itself for several days. And uh, let's see if we can get a good picture of it move my hand off the camera uh yeah it's sustained itself since i put it in uh it has reduced as the water level reduces and there's less log in the water there is less of that so i'm also not sure what oh dear clicking water over i'm also not sure whether what i'm doing is just adding more of the same thing that i've already got which is a possibility now i've just watched a video and it says i basically have to fill something like this which needs a good clean with water and then i need another vessel probably something like this although one with a cap on it to shake it would be better and i fill this with water and yeast and i give it a good shake and then i feed this which is the your water the most 
acceptable water possible don't use tap water unless it has stood for at least 24 hours you can reduce that time a little bit by bubbling the water with an air stone then i pop my rotifacis in and then i feed from the yeast i could also probably feed them a little bit from this which i top up every couple of days and i've just tipped some into here which is where i've got my mammoth fairy shrimp growing I've only put a few of those in at this time because it does say they like to grow in 30 degrees Celsius. I can't believe that that's a struggle for me because it says, I believe it was on Wiki, that they come from Canada where they live under the ice. So unless they're living in very shallow areas where the sun bakes on it and it gets up to 30 degrees in sort of like sheltered enclaves, I find it really difficult to believe that, to be honest. Well, the Garamus Pulex. So the animals we've got in here, which it is going to add to the food table. I'm sort of, I'm coming back to Aquaria, and I know a little bit, and I'm not a biological numpty or newbie. Um, but I still don't know fully, truly, what each and every single thing eats. I can see Cyclops, they eat sort of Infosoria and Algae, right? Uh, the Acellus, they eat a kind of micro mycelium a little fungi but then i've also seen them sort of nibbling on other bits and pieces the gramus pulex um i guess is an algae eater we can't see a gramus at the moment we can however see um oh look there's an acellus there on that piece of serotophyllum <coughs> Uh, the Garamus pulex I've also eating, seen eating the shells of the acellus. So the acellus shed their skin um, every so often. I have not noted the time yet. They've just done a big skin shed. And I've seen the Garamus actually eating it. So that's quite optimistic and positive. There are also snails in here. You know, normal trumpet ones, not ram's horn ones. They are not the Limnaea stagnalis. They're the other one. Obviously, I can remember the name of the one I haven't got. Uh, oh, there's a Garamus. They, swim in. they sort of swim upside down, mostly. Uh, I have seen them, though, swimming what we'd call conventionally the correct way up with legs down. Just not so often. Uh, it might be because they're like a little bit top heavy with their bum. So inevitably, they look to topple over. So they swim upside down anyway. As you can see, that's a cyclops there. It's a copepod cyclops. Um, it's one of the ones which is feeding the bigger fish. And you can tell that because they have a little spike at the back of their tail. There is a type of cyclops which does not have a spike. In fact, I think you'll find these are the double spike cyclops. So they are not the ones for feeding to your fry. Because your fry will not be able to get them in the mouth with the little spiky tail on them. Uh, have I got any of the other ones? I don't know, but when I came to set this up, from somewhere I had a cyclops that had green eggs on its back and I've never seen that before unfortunately and foolishly I didn't sector it and I've poured it into one of either that or that I cannot see it in that so hopefully at some point I'm going to notice a whole load of green egged cyclops I guess and think it might have come in with a packet of Daphnia but for colour, they were wow. I don't know whether, because it's not its digestive tract, I had been thinking perhaps they were green because of what they'd eaten, which may be so. But I was also thinking that they were, um, as it was the eggs and not the digestive tract, perhaps that was just the natural colouring. I also have two types of leeches, at least two types of leeches in here. We've got this one up here, which... Again, I don't know the name, but it is a live breeding one. And I'll maybe try and get a video later of it with all its little babies. They sort of stick in its stomach and sort of launch out at you from the belly of the um, leech. And it carries it around, carries them around with it. And then there is another leech in there, which is a bit more like the medicinal leech. Um, 
And then there are another two that are sort of a red colour, and I'm not really sure yet whether they are the medicinal leech or whether they're a leech that I originally put in my pond, which was a red leech, but they were they were like little red, not little red worms, because they were about um, sort of like an inch, inch and a half long. So they weren't red worms, but it was a red leech, and I've not been able to find them recently. I've not had a massive good look, but I've had a little peek, and usually you could still see them wafting in the water. And they seem to have been replaced by these white ones. And I'm thinking that has happened by introduction of some weed that I found floating in the River Thames. Sorry, not the River Thames, it was in the Kennet Canal, and it was a big patch of Elodia that was floating by. So I picked up a stick and I hooked some into a carrier bag. <clears throat> and then I've separated it and used it to bring a local natural continuity so that what is in pond is also in Kennet to a, in the canal to an extent. So yes, that's that. So what I'm going to do this afternoon, <clears throat> and I shall make another video, is uh, prepare these rotifer. But I am still sort of looking at that, thinking that that is rotifer. It's tough to see, isn't it, in this light? Then I can, can I do this? Hold on. Yeah, all right. Um, is that going to go on? I was trying to switch the uh, phone's light on, but it doesn't seem to want to go. Okay, so that's that. Thank you very much for watching and being introduced to my new tank. Uh, this, before we go, is where I'm growing the little hairy grass. So I'm sort of starting them off in here and then dropping them and then sort of just gently positioning them with a little stick. Uh, the Acellus and the other animals do do their bit with the gardening. Um, you, it was quite obvious to see that some of the seeds that had fallen on the surface had been turned under the soil by the leeches' activity within the substrate. So that was very good. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Already have big clouds of infosoria. Um, going to have even bigger clouds of infosoria now. Big infosoria warfare. Rodifers coming in and coming through. Okay, thanks very much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.